Well, hi there. I'm Carol Lutzinger. I'm so glad you tuned into Science Stuff today. And I remember several programs back, I told you that one of these days we would do an our activity about recycling because I know Brownsville ISD is working hard to do recycling. And the city of Brownsville has also begun an experiment, a science experiment, to see if Brownsville people would really support curbside recycling. So you may see some houses that have a red trash can in front of their house, and that's their recycling container. Not everything can be recycled, and it, and there's recycling and there's recycling. And yes, there is a difference. So we're going to talk about that. First of all, think about the word itself, recycle. And a cycle is something that moves in a circle. You may ride a bicycle, which means it has two wheels. You may have somebody who rides a motorcycle that has two wheels. You may have a little brother or sister who rides a tricycle with three wheels. But cycle just means it goes in a circle. It's like the seasons. We don't get new seasons every year. We go through the same four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. It goes. We have day and night cycle. We have phases of the moon cycle. You have cycles at the school cafeteria too, don't you? With the cycle goes through the week and you get this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and later on it shows back up again. Cycles are important. Recycling means using something again. And you may have noticed that when we do these programs, I bring things from home. I don't go to the store and buy new things every time. I recycle those utensils and I work with them here and you do that. Your mom doesn't buy a new measuring cup every time she needs to measure something. So I have my bag of stuff and you never know what's going to be in the bag. I have something very strange here that's going to be part of another program that we're waiting to get permission to do. Um, but this is a recycled container as well. And I'm going to let you think about what this is going to be. There is a fluffy piece of cotton here stuck in a hole. There is twine wrapped around the edges of the container so that I can hang it somewhere. And the only thing that's in here right now is air. <laughs> So what in the world are we going to use this for? You'll find out later in the program. I have a keyboard. It died on my computer last week and I had to go buy a new one. But I am going to recycle it. I'm going to take it and drop it off so that it can, the plastic can be melted down and used again. There are metals in here that can be melted down and used maybe to make another computer or maybe a pair of glasses frames. I don't know about this. I, I just thought this was cool because it could be something that you would make a, a, a diorama with. You could draw pictures on this. You could make a sign to hang on your wall. I don't know what it could be used for, but it's pretty, it's white, it's not marked on, and I could do just about anything I wanted to do with this. So we're gonna set that here. Does it remind you of a science fair project board? It did me. So I'm going to set this aside and see what's in the bag. Um, the wrapper from my newspaper so that it didn't get wet in the rain. And an article from the newspaper has got something to do with this container. So this is plastic. And remember, plastic is made with oil. It was a liquid. Now it is a solid. It is translucent. It lets light pass through it. It reflects light. Plastic. Lots of plastic. This little container, I forget what was in it. 
but I thought it looked like something real. Oh, I know, it was the top on the water bottles. I thought this looked kind of like a space habitat. You know, Brownsville is the site for SpaceX, and SpaceX is busy building rockets and testing engines because Mr. Musk hopes to send human beings to Mars. And when we do, because I'm sure that eventually we will send somebody there, although it's going to be a terribly dangerous, dangerous mission. It will be something. Because it, right now, with the travel we have, it takes seven months to get to Mars and seven months to get back. And you'd have to stay on Mars a year before it was in the right place for you to even come home again. So I'm looking at all of this transparent plastic stuff because I think I could have fun building a Mars habitat. I, you know, check the trash before it gets trash and see what you could do. And we're going to take a look at many different things here this, this today. Um, this one, I just, I, you know, these, pap these plastic packaging had to be designed because it was easier to keep things on the shelf, but it also kind of cut down on shoplifting because people sometimes forget that they have to pay for stuff and they take it on purpose. If anybody ever tries to get you to take something out of store without paying for it, tell them, no, you don't do that because it gets you in big trouble. More plastic. Lots, I have lots of plastic recycle stuff in here. And, if, and remember, it's all made out of oil. So if you think it's only used for making gasoline or oil to lubricate your car, nope, it's for a lot of other different things. More plastic, more plastic. Now, when you take your things to the recycling center, they sort it out from the metal things and the plastic things. And I, I just have, I have a lot of stuff in here, and um, I guess the rest of this is not recycling. It's stuff that we're going to use in another program. Uh, let's see. Yep, here's some more little things to do that would might might make our habitat really cool. Now the fun thing about this, it's whatever you want it to be. And it's your imagination that makes it happen. Oh, here's another one. And another, I mean, there's a, you see all of this stuff could go in the trash, in the landfill. When the garbage truck comes by your house and empties that garbage into the big truck, the big truck drives out by the port and there's a huge, there was, there used to be a huge hole in the ground out there. The hole in the ground is filled up now and now there's a hill and the hill is becoming a mountain of our trash because we waste a lot of stuff. So lids from Play-Doh that we've done stuff with here before, empty water bottles, caps for detergent stuff, scoopers, they could be, you know what, this could be a planter. You could start your little plant seeds in there. I want you to, to look around at this stuff, these plastic covers. All of this could be a habitat. So if I said, okay, this is where my people are gonna live. Um, this is gonna be their water tank. Um, oh, let's see, this is going to be their, this is where they're gonna grow their, their food to eat because if you go to Mars, you're gonna have to grow your own food. There's there's no way to take food for two years in a spaceship. Just no way. So either you're going to have to eat, eat a pill, which that wouldn't be good, or grow their own stuff. So we're going to say, this is my greenhouse, and I have to have a way to get there. So here's my tunnel, and it goes to my greenhouse. And maybe this could be my, my connector to go home. Your imagination is what you need to go by. And your imagination and my imagination are not going to be the same. So having some glue and, or some tape or, you know, this could be my, 
I don't know, what could this be? What do you think? And, and an antenna on the top to, to, well, let's get some tape and see if we can make it stay up there. When my son was little, Star Wars was, the, was out. It was the very first Star Wars. He's 51 now. So Star Wars has been out a long time. So Christopher really liked Star Wars stuff. And we collected a whole bunch of things like this. And we made our own uh, spaceship. And all. it was all imaginary. But it was fun to pretend. And, and, you know, it's just, it's fun to pretend. You don't always need to get a video game to do something fun. Let's see if I can get this to make a hole in here. Boy, that's some tough plastic. They don't want me to get in there. And this, this bolt has a point on it and it's not going well there it did it did go through the plastic so i did oh I, you know what i have something else in the bag that will i'm going to use let me see yeah did you know that you can use a straw to make a paper rocket and if you what you do is you take a strip of paper and you wrap it around a, a pencil and tape it shut. I'm going to show you what you could do. You hear just with the wrapper on it. Well, it didn't go. Is there a hole in it? There must be a hole in the paper. So if you seal it up and blow it, it should go off. So I've got the hole here in my little plastic thing and it's, the hole's not big enough. But at home, you've got all those different things that you can piddle with and make be something for your Mars habitat and imagination is a fun cool thing we've got caps from our toner for our computer printer um, jar lids bottle lids it's just your imagination so collect the junk try not to get anything that's got a sharp edge on it because that would cut you this this thing would hurt if you stuck it in your skin um, it's the bolt that I was going to use to fix the thing on my fence but imagination is a great tool, and recycling is another one. Now, I said I would tell you about this. One of the things that NASA did over the years was take spiders into space to see if they could spin webs. And we're going to do a, a program about that as soon as I can get permission from a, from a book people about using something in their book. But this is the habitat for the spider. And all this is is a container that had apple turnovers in it from the grocery store. And I melted holes here in the corner and I ran this twine through there so that I could hang it up. And the spider, when I catch the spider, I have to catch the spider first. The spider's going to be in here and use this twine to hopefully make its web and we'll get to see the spider and the cotton is to put moisture in here for the spider because yes spiders need water too and the deal is we would put some water on here and it would flow through the cotton fibers and into here and they could go over to the cotton and have a drip of water and the article i don't know does your school get the newspaper on monday so that you can read what's in the newspaper check and ask your teacher if you're part of the newspapers in school there was an article that says spiders may take a nap now i really don't care if spiders take a nap but somebody does this is the fun thing about science if you have a question science can help you find the answer imagine sitting there one day watching a spider have you ever seen a spider do exercise on a mirror they do this so this is a spider doing its exercise on the mirror and you're saying, gee, I wonder if that spider ever takes a nap. And then you say, well, I'm going to ask the government for a grant to help me study that. And sure enough, you get the grant and here's the article. Study suggests spiders may snooze like humans. It's a question that keeps some scientists awake at night. Do spiders sleep? And the scientist is named Daniela Rossler and her, she and her college colleagues got money to study a spider. 
And we're going to talk about this a little bit more once I catch a spider and we have our spider program. So keep watching science stuff and having fun on your own with recycling and making your own space station on Mars. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.